In this video, we're going to get a quick update on Major Hurricane Sam as it continues to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. Then, we have storms in the lower 48 today, prompting the Storm Prediction Center to issue a slight risk of severe weather. We're going to talk about that and future storms that may be coming down the pipeline. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we get started today, I don't know, I don't know what's going on with my hair. <laughs> I reckon it's about time for me to get my ears lowered, but before I do that, here's your friendly reminder to go ahead and slap that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. We're talking about weather round the clock all year long here on this channel, so even if the tropical storms and stuff don't affect you right now, we're getting ready to head into winter, and then after that, we'll have another severe weather season, so you might as well join the club and come aboard as we continue to talk about the weather. All right, here's a big old view of Hurricane Sam once again out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, just east of the Caribbean islands. It's still churning like crazy out here, but it's actually a lot less intense than it was the last time we looked at this storm. And that was expected as it is now curving to the north and experiencing a little bit of wind shear, especially on the western side. Okay, let's zoom out here and look at the track from the National Hurricane Center as to where they think this is gonna go and how strong it's gonna be. We call this big red thing the cone of uncertainty here because the storm could go anywhere inside of that. And by the way, Hurricane Sam is still a category four hurricane with wind speeds around 130 miles an hour with wind gusts around 160 miles an hour and it's moving northwest and it's got that minimum pressure of 953 millibars. So this thing has been bouncing back and forth between a category three and a category four since it became a category four just the other day and it's expected to maintain its strength as a category four all the way up here until tomorrow around 2 p.m. It'll still be a 130 mile an hour storm uh, with 160 mile an hour wind gust but we do expect that sometime between 2 p.m. tomorrow and 2 2 a.m. on the 30th of September. Uh, this will weaken a little bit, okay? We're going to have 125 mile an hour winds at this point, and that's going to make it a category three, okay? And we expect this to continue to be a category three all the way up here on October 1st with the same thing, 125 mile an hour winds. And then this is when the thing really starts to speed up and do that big recurve, okay? So from October 1st at 2 a.m. to October 2nd at 2 a.m., it's going to travel this much distance, uh, which is a lot more than what it has been doing, uh, but it's still going to have 120 mile an hour winds still a category three storm at this point, uh, just to the east of Bermuda, okay? Good news is it looks like this is not going to affect Bermuda too much. Definitely some big surf, some big waves, uh, but I don't think that we're gonna see a direct hit here uh, in Bermuda from this storm. And then look at this way up north here, as far north as New York City, it's still gonna be a hurricane, a category two hurricane with 110 mile an hour winds, but don't worry, this thing is way off the coast, okay? This is not going to affect the United States at all. Uh, just like we've been saying for the past week, uh, it's finally hitting that big wall of protection there um, with our wind shear and recurving off to the north and east. Now, there are more storms forming behind Sam. And we're going to come back to the tropics right here in a second. But for now, let's take a look at the short-term forecast for the whole United States. All right, let's take a look at the HER model. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh model. This is going to show us what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day, today, and tomorrow. If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be displayed up there above my head. And the first thing we're going to look at is over here in the mid-Atlantic region and the north northeast. We do have that slight risk of severe weather today uh, from the Storm Prediction Center, okay? The biggest threats here are going to be hail and wind, and there's actually a very, very low tornado threat, so I definitely don't think we're going to see any tornadoes today. Uh, but still, the damaging wind and hail is going to be there, so let's look at that radar and let's see what's going to happen here. we got an area of rain that's moving through uh, from right now in eastern Pennsylvania uh, through 2 p.m. today. It's going to be moving through Long Island, making its way into southern New York, into Connecticut as well. Uh, those are going to be some decent little storms, regular garden variety rain showers. There's an area of cold air up here that's really going to try to force its way down. Not necessarily cold air, but cooler air. And when that forcing happens, it's going to cause another area of storms to form here in the Delmarva area. And also, once again, in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's these storms that we are kind of concerned about as far as the uh, wind and hail problem goes. I think that we're going to see maybe some isolated areas with 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. That's definitely enough to cause some damage and some down uh, trees and power lines and stuff. And also maybe a couple areas we'll see some uh, big time hailstones, okay? Especially here in southeastern Pennsylvania today around 6 p.m. Uh, we could see some severe thunderstorms around the Philadelphia area, uh, moving into the Baltimore, uh, Maryland area as well. And then by 9 p.m. tonight, everything's really going to start dying out 
and moving out to sea, okay? So this isn't gonna be a widespread severe weather event. Uh, this is just your typical, uh, you know, uh, wind risk. And some of you guys that, that live over here are gonna see big storms today. And some of you guys will be nearly missed by them. So nothing to freak out about, but just make sure you are prepared for the worst. And then as we keep pushing this forward, you can see a upper level low here trying to spin down uh, some cold air uh, into the Northeast and the Ohio Valley. It's gonna bring some cold rain showers to Maine and Vermont. Uh, but once again, this isn't Arctic cold or anything. It's just, you know, it's fall, okay? And that's as far as we can go out there. Now let's take a look at the central US and let's rewind it back here and start playing it again, okay? Around 1 p.m. today, we're gonna see some heavy rain moving into the southeastern Texas region and into Louisiana. We have this flow of moisture coming into Texas and the Midwest here that's gonna be sticking around with us for a little while. And right here on the coastline where it's coming ashore, uh, we're gonna see a lot of heavy rain over the next little bit. Uh, including the Houston area all the way over to Lake Charles in Louisiana. Uh, some of these storms could be pretty uh, intense as far as the rainfall goes, but we don't expect much in the way of severe weather. That changes a little bit over here in Texas as a little boundary tries to cause uh, some actual severe thunderstorms today from Wichita Falls all the way down to Abilene. Uh, these right here could also have some damaging winds today, but this is just a marginal risk. We don't expect widespread severe weather at all. Once we get into 4 a.m. tonight, most of the storms have died down, but we're still talking about that heavy rain down here. And look at this in the higher elevation of uh, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. We got snow on the map. I love seeing the snow on the map. I can't wait until it comes down to the uh, valleys. <laughs> that system that's bringing the snow is gonna bring some more storms tomorrow into tomorrow night into Nebraska and Kansas as well, okay? So we're gonna see uh, pretty uh, frequent thunderstorms from uh, this point in Nebraska and Iowa points south uh, from uh, you know Thursday on as this uh, just river of moisture continues to pull in from the Gulf of Mexico. Most of that rain's gonna be dumped down here, but like I said, we're gonna have thunderstorms up here in the Midwest as well. Let's check out the West Coast. Start Starting off at 10 a.m. today, we're gonna have, uh, you know, snow showers in the higher elevations of Idaho, associated with an atmospheric river coming in off of the uh, Pacific Ocean, bringing lots of rain and snow to Washington and Oregon. And that's gonna continue for a while, as you can see, lots of rain up here, especially near Seattle points north, as our weather pattern is shifting uh, into fall and we start to get this uh, area of moisture that just pours into the Pacific Northwest uh, and it's gonna be stuck with us for a, a while, once again. Okay, let's take a look at temperatures in the short term. It's gonna be a hot one today, all the way up in to Manitoba, Canada, and of course, all the way down into Texas uh, around 5 p.m. today, we're gonna see widespread 90 to 100 degree temperatures. Once again, through Texas into Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, it's extreme southeastern portions of Montana and then up into Canada. A big old ridge has formed up here and it's gonna slowly break down over the next couple of days. Watch this, we've got cooler air moving into the uh, Pacific Northwest and we've got cooler air trying to advance southward here uh, into the Northeast as well. That's what's sparking our storms today. So let's Let's watch that happen. Let's watch the high temperatures for tomorrow. And as you can see, they're less intense, okay? As this uh, big ridge is starting to deteriorate, as these troughs are really starting to work at it. But as we push it on forward, the cold air continues to try to win as we're gonna see temperatures in the 20s through much of the Rocky Mountain region. Uh, these are low temperatures on Thursday. Uh, also very cold temperatures in the Appalachians here. Maine's gonna see widespread 30s and 40s with high temperatures only getting in the 70s maybe over here into Kansas and Nebraska, maybe even cooler than that in the Dakotas. Still hot as heck though in Texas though on Thursday. And then those low temperatures get really low here on Friday morning, October 1st, coming in with uh, some cold air here in Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. We're talking about 30 degrees, possibly approaching freezing there. And of course, the entire western portion of the United States is starting to get a little chilly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the temperatures and stuff over the next little bit. I hope I covered everybody adequately. Now let's go back to the tropics. All right, here's that five day graphical tropical weather outlook. Here is major hurricane Sam. Here's our little scuff, our little bloop bloop. And then down here, uh, these are the next two areas of interest that we really have to watch, okay? We have two disturbances down here with an 80% chance of formation over the next five days. The one to the east is actually a 90% chance of a cyclone formation in five days as showers and thunderstorms are showing signs of organization in association with a tropical wave and a broad area of low pressure, okay? So this has just kind of been the theme so far of the latter half of hurricane season here. A uh, bunch of storms coming off of Africa. Uh, a lot of them have, you know, significant potential to become huge storms, but it looks to me as if most of them are curving out to sea here. Thankfully, once again, uh, we're getting that early push of some of the colder air and a lot of those troughs coming in off the east coast of the U.S., uh, building up that wind shear here, that crosswind, and, and once again, acting as a wall of protection, keeping these storms away. So as of right now, I don't think we have anything to worry about here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS uh, to see what it says is going to happen with these storms. Starting off tomorrow.
tomorrow, you're going to see our Hurricane Sam over here with a 974 millibar. Uh, low pressure system, according to this model, I think that's a little high. I think it'll actually be stronger than that at this point, which is something to keep in mind, okay? You know, if it's saying that this storm's going to be uh, less intense than what it's actually going to be, uh, then what is it doing with these storms, okay? You, the stuff you have to think about. The computer models are uh, really smart. The, the algorithms and programs that make uh, these models come to fruition are really awesome, <laughs> and it's a, it's a miracle that we have them. But there are little problems here and there, and that's why we have meteorologists uh, who look at this stuff and make their own forecasts uh, based off of the models and we don't just trust them blindly. But anyways, here are our two waves of moisture and thunderstorms coming off of Africa. Uh, let's see what happens with those, okay? Sam's gonna go off to the north and to the west. Uh, we quickly see development in that one. Uh, th this is the most eastern wave, okay? We might have a tropical storm here on a Thursday or into Friday, maybe. And that other wave, it, the GFS really isn't saying much is gonna happen with that at all. So let's keep pushing it forward, that first wave. Uh, really starts to weaken a lot, but the second one continues to try to truck along. Here's Hurricane Sam, still pretty strong, really recurving off to the north and east now. And this is on uh, October 2nd. Let's go whoop, a little bit further into the future. And this wave is really, really <laughs> recurving off to the north and to the uh, well, pretty much due north at this point, uh, as it's kind of being attracted to this large area of lower heights that this uh, Hurricane Sam is causing as it tries to gravitate towards the North Pole there. Really strong storm at this point, 968 millibar low pressure system. But as you can see, the GFS doesn't say that any of that stuff is going to affect land uh, directly. Now, here's something interesting as we go with Way out into La La Land. Here's October 11th. We do have another thing forming over here in the Caribbean, okay? And we talked about this in the last video. Uh, it showed something forming and trying to go over Cuba. And now, you know, we're going to see a lot of fluctuations here over the next little bit. But now it's showing this development kind of going over Cuba and then heading east along that wall of wind shear that we have and then possibly becoming a big storm over here uh, for Nova Scotia. So we'll see what happens with that. But as of right now, even though the tropics are certainly not quiet, the tropics are extremely active actually. Uh, I see nothing uh, to be concerned about on the coast of the U.S. All right, last but not least, let's do an in-depth forecast here for the whole U.S. in the medium range, okay? So we already did the short-term forecast today and tomorrow. We already talked about the temperatures and stuff. Now let's go beyond that and look at what's gonna happen as we go into Thursday, okay? So here we are early in the morning on Thursday around 5 a.m. We got some of those storms and stuff forming here in uh, Kansas and Nebraska like I was talking about earlier. Once again, we have this flow of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico that's really going to combine with some of this cooler air that's trying to come in from the Pacific Northwest and cause thunder storms over here. That's going to be a prolonged uh, problem that we have there in the Midwest. But as we go further into the future, uh, this big ridge is going to try to throw some of this moisture and warmer air uh, up into Canada here at Manitoba. You guys are going to be warmer than a lot of people uh, much further to your south, even in the uh, New England area, uh, as you get locked into some warm air there. And what's happening is on this uh, border area of the warmer air, uh, we're seeing storms form, okay, right here in the middle, okay? So uh, the Texas, Arkansas, through Kansas, Missouri, way all the way up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, portions of Minnesota. We're going to be wet, okay, as we enter the early portion of October, and slowly that area of wetness is going to progress off to the east and to the southeast, uh, creating another flow of moisture like this as we get into around the October 5th timeline. Uh, where we're still seeing really heavy rain in Texas and Louisiana. And once again, I think this is, uh, since we're having such a prolonged problem with this, I think it's going to lead to some flash flooding problems. Uh, and then that's going to extend over into uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, West Virginia, uh, Ohio, and then even up into the uh, northern Appalachian areas as we go forward. And look at this, it kind of gets stuck right here. It's going to be very wet uh, in the southeast as we go later on into the uh, la latter portion of next week. And we still have storms forming out here in the Midwest. So that's pretty much all that's happening, okay? We got a lot of rain coming for some people. Uh, we got some slight uh, temperature fluctuations coming, but nothing crazy, okay? Like I said, fall, other than hurricanes and your occasional surprise uh, winter storm that comes through, it's kind of boring, okay? I, I'm just being honest with you. But we will certainly take the boring weather over the insanity that we've seen for the vast majority of this year. Uh, with all of our hurricanes and our tornado outbreaks and our big winter storms earlier in the year, I'm sure we will all take a uh, cool down period here with the, the boring weather in the lower 48. I do think things are going to ramp up this winter and we're going to have some big snowstorms. So once again, please subscribe as we continue to talk about this stuff through every season. So that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.